Hello, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as now it's time to bring you today's Toy of the Week video. Now, we're into our fourth week of these, which is really exciting as the response to them continues to be phenomenal. Uh, for my part, I'm just enjoying the opportunity to tell you a bit about some of my favourite robots, but of course it's always nice to know when it resonates with other people too. Uh, in fact, I've been really quite bowled over reading so many of the comments that everyone is leaving me on my videos so far, so if you have taken the time to drop me a note, thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Uh, now, in terms of questions I've received over the last week or so, I think the best one was probably asking uh, where I typically look to source a lot of my vintage figures from, and, and if there are you know, any hints or tips that I could provide about searching out old G1 toys, for example. Well, I'm always wary of trying to sound like an expert on these kind of things. And, I, you know, I don't know I have one particular trade secret or what have you. Uh, I mean, like a lot of you, it really is just dumb luck that I stumble across a particular figure that I've been looking for for ages. Uh, of course, like the best of them, I've been known to scour eBay at times. But honestly, there's so much overpriced stuff on there to steer clear of too. So you do kind of have to root through for the bargains. Um, otherwise, there are a lot of Facebook groups dedicated to selling secondhand transformers that you could try, uh, or alternatively, a lot of the well-known message boards have buy-sell-trade sections too. Uh, I think, to be honest, some of my biggest successes have also come out of just striking up conversation with people sometimes. Uh, you know, it might be someone that you know is selling toys that you're looking for. Uh, I mean, for example, once I was, um, this is a few years back, I was in touch with a guy uh, who, after a few messages back and forth, revealed to me that he was looking to part ways with a G1 Slug Slinger and asked me if I'd be interested. Now, that's a toy that is almost impossible to find in mint condition. Uh, it very often has, has wear on some of the chrome parts or discoloration, what have you. Um, so as soon as I saw photos of the thing, I, I knew that I had to have it. Um, and it was just incredible condition. Uh, and, and really, the price was too good to pass up. Um, and that just came out of a bit of online banter, so I guess you never know. Anyway, I am actually going to be doing more articles on TF Source in a series called The Vintage View, where I'll be covering off some of these points as I go. For today, though, it's time to get back onto the topic at hand, which of course is our new Toy of the Week. Uh, and it's a bit of an unusual one today. It's Generation 1 Clench. Clench is a truly unique Generation 1 toy in a lot of senses. He was only ever released in European markets and originally came out in 1993, three whole years after the original line had ended in North America where Action Masters had been the final wave of toys. At the time, Generation 2 was just starting in the US and was mostly made up of recycled G1 designs and new paint schemes, although they did choose to import a couple of European originals to bolster the ranks a bit. Not so with Clench, however, who remained exclusive to Europe even when he was re-released a year later in 1994 under the Generation 2 line, although he'd now been renamed as Colossus. Although both names are cool, I always think of him by his original moniker, but really, it's whichever floats your boat. As an obliterator, Clench's main gimmick is that his vehicle mode splits into two parts, with the front half becoming the robot mode and the rear section turning into a mobilized battle platform complete with its own gimmicks, as we'll see. The robot mode itself is a truly unique affair, rocking a midnight blue and hot pink combo that few toys could pull off even in the G2 era. The blue sections have a really nice sparkly quality to them that honestly needs to be seen in hand to fully appreciate. Meanwhile, the chest section boasts some superb detailed molding, and despite Clench not having a handheld blaster of any kind, he's packing a couple of mega-looking boob cannons. Clench has some really unique stickers too, with the most obvious example being the lightning bolt decals on his shoulders, which also feature a small logo with a wolf's head on them. It's perhaps in reference to the battle platform gimmick, but it's not entirely clear. Either way, it looks ace. As a robot, Clench can also claim some superior articulation going on for the time, as he features joints at the knees, hips, shoulders and elbows. It's not quite up to modern standards, but it allows for a bit of play value nonetheless. Finally, it's worth highlighting that awesome head sculpt, which is surely quite unique for Generation 1 and 2. It's both hideous and beautiful in equal measure, and if anything, it gives me serious Bayformer Decepticon vibes with the way it looks kind of insectoid in nature. Or is it just me? The battle platform is really quite fun too, with a few different features going on. The design looks fantastic, and the huge artillery on offer more than makes up for Clench not boasting a hand blaster of any kind. There are two little handles for the robot mode to grip, 
And then if you press a button on the front, a translucent green visor section pops up for Clench to look through. Finally, you can pull back on a launching mechanism to fire a couple of missiles across the room, either to take an eye out if you're not careful, or to be lost under the sofa forevermore. So it goes. Clench's transformation back to vehicle mode is simple, but again quite unique, with the way the legs fold up perhaps the biggest surprise of all. And just look at the result. Now, I'm a huge fan of this truck mode, as it looks all impressive and powerful, yet somehow still pulls off neon pink and green highlights for the win. There's also some nice chrome, which is hard to find in good condition if you're picking this guy up secondhand, and a cracking translucent green windshield. Again, the stickers make for some good fun here, with an eye-catching yellow stripe motif on the sides and a quasi-Texan license plate on the rear. Some of the gimmicks from the battle platform carry over nicely into this mode too, as it's still possible to raise up the back section to use the scope and missile functions if you wish. You can even use the stand from the battle platform as a kind of extending grip to catch pursuing Autobots unawares. Really, the play value is just endless with this guy. Clench is just one of two toys in the Obliterator range, with the other being his Autobot counterpart Pyro, who was later renamed to Spark for re-release in Generation 2. Pyro is a great toy in his own right, but sadly falls victim to the gold plastic syndrome problems of the time. Clench, meanwhile, looks absolutely brilliant next to other Decepticons from that era, fitting in superbly well with the aesthetic of the time. Seriously, any time someone says to me that Transformers went downhill after 1980-whatever, I just sort of assume that they've never seen this lot in action. In fact, I think it's only fair to say that some of my own personal favourites come from that time, with the European exclusive designs from 1991 to 93 being just one triumph after another in my book, but maybe that's a story for another time. Speaking of stories, Clench never really registered in Transformers fiction given his late arrival in G1 and his absence from the US market during G2. His sole canonical appearance of any kind was in the first issue of the UK exclusive Generation 2 comic produced by Fleetway, where he can be seen for one panel in his truck mode. Meanwhile, his box art depiction is a little on the rough side, to say the least, capturing precisely none of the majestic quality that the robot mode can claim. Clench hasn't been entirely hard done by, however, and did receive a BotCon exclusive toy as part of a box set in 2010, where he was a repaint of Universe Onslaught, so that's something. So I know those in-between years of the European line before Generation 2 are still a bit of a mystery to some, but it does surprise me to consider how many great toys were put out during that time, and especially how many of those designs have never been reused. I mean, a, a toy like this is really nicely designed with some fantastic gimmicks, and so, you know, should be a natural to get picked up as repaint potential further down the line, but it never happened. I mean, maybe that's what makes them such an enigma to some. For my part, I just think he's great, though. I mean, he's solid as anything, tons of fun, and just feels like there was a lot of intent behind how it was designed. Uh, like the way that the gimmicks can be used in both modes and how the claw at the back of the vehicle mode can extend are really well thought through. And honestly, you know, just a great example of why a lot of toys from this era are vastly underrated. Oh, and that robot mode is just superb. So unique, so striking, top tier stuff in my book. So there you go, that's Clench or Colossus, whatever you prefer, who is our new Toy of the Week. Thanks again for watching and I hope you're enjoying the new channel. If you haven't yet, then please don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and if you want to send me any more questions, whether it's about me or my collection before next time, then of course I'll try and answer some of those in the next video. Quick final shout out to everyone who already supports me on Patreon. Details are coming up at the end of the video, so if you'd like to do the same, of course it's really appreciated. That's it from me, so enjoy the rest of your day. TTFN.